Right, so Nadim Zahawi, we're back to him again. An all-new scandal is now emerging here. There's no end to it now that his family finances are being uncovered. Or is it just a case of he's damaged goods now, so the press barons and perhaps their informants are simply coughing their weaselly black guts up on him due to the fact he still won't do the honourable thing and resign, thereby limiting the damage to the Tories he is still causing. There's political blood in the water after all. The vultures are circling. There shouldn't it be more a case of Rishi Sunak growing a spine and doing what must be done and just sacking him? The longer so how he limps on, the more damage it's doing to Sunak personally too. Well, that's his problem, isn't it? There's no sympathy coming their way from me. At any rate, this latest round of Zahawi-induced rancidness involves his wife, Lana Saeed, this time, and a serious amount of unsecured loans, which are, in typical Zahawi fashion, shrouded in secrecy. The weird thing is, these unsecured loans are all to do with Lana Saeed's property empire, a property company that used to be shared between Nads and herself 50-50, called, imaginatively, Zahawi and Zahawi. But once Nads became a junior minister in 2018, Around the same time as it happens that those YouGov shares of his were sold, he transferred his stake in Zahawi and Zahawi to his wife Lana. So the whole shebang was all entirely in her name from that moment on. The company had been formed in 2010 and according to the land registry, has a property portfolio of 17 properties bought for in the region of £60 million since the company was set up. High-end, high-value property and now worth an estimated £100 million. Now... I looked at this story when it happened across my desk and on the face of it, I was thinking, hang on a minute. Anyone who has property surely secures a loan they wish to take out against said property. You'd think getting a secured loan against assets of that magnitude would be nice and easy, wouldn't you? So why get unsecured loans instead then? You get a cheaper loan rate for a start if it's a secured loan by virtue of the fact you're putting some security up against it because the loan gets registered against whatever assets you are securing your loan against. In this case, it would be property, wouldn't it? But when you secure a loan against property, and given Sir Howie's financial reputation right now, this is the relevant bit, the land registry makes an entry about that and who the lender is. So it becomes publicly available information as to who lent it. And here's the thing about this series of loans here. This is where the sleaze comes in yet again, and eyebrows are being raised because we don't know who the lender or lenders are. A property portfolio worth some £100 million today, and Mrs. Sahawi has somehow managed to get some £30 million in unsecured loans. As Dan Needle, the Tax Policy Associates think tank guy who has been dissecting the Zahawi's finances we've already heard about up until now said, for all we know, Elvis lent them the money. Why intentionally pay more in the way of interest for these loans by not putting up security when you clearly have it? It's a number of loans over several years, too, it should be noted. But of course, because we don't know the lenders of these loans, we don't know upon what terms their mystery benefactor lent the money. But the only conclusion you can reach when clearly the assets were there to secure such a vast sum is that they again have something to hide. And it seems fairly straightforward to assume their lenders are not people that the Howies want the public to know about because they have chosen unsecured lending, which is more expensive. But that way, we don't get to know who their lenders are. How many of us could get £30 million unsecured lent to us? What kind of people are in a position to lend it and do so without the peace of mind a security against such a vast sum brings? It's a mind-boggling amount of money. So Howie does, of course, have significant wealth, which probably answers that he's good for it. But that then makes this a case of which, with great wealth, comes the purchase of great secrecy. And when these people are also lawmakers in this country, the obvious fear of illicit dealings going on, of a politician being compromised perhaps, means there's clearly an obvious concern that Nadim Zahawi could somehow have financially compromised himself through his family's business dealings. And concern is raised further when you realise the loans were made in order to purchase even more property. There are rules when it comes to buying property, you see. You're buying a sizeable asset, very definitely so in their case. For ordinary people, it's the biggest purchase they ever make. So your means of paying for them, particularly on the scale Lana Saeed has, appears to demonstrate a bending of these rules too, because it is a legal requirement to state the source of funds used in order to purchase property. This is in place to prevent, for example, money laundering, hiding ill-gotten gains in bricks and mortar to sell at a later date, perhaps with a tiny profit. Hardly news for the Tories when our capital is referred to as the London laundromat for the likes of Russian funds and more. And the Tories do like their Russian money, don't they? 
They do love their Russian donors. Not knowing, therefore, who made these in unsecured loans, almost four times the size of the capital gains tax he didn't pay on those YouGov shares, if you also count his fine, let's not forget, all paid to not even to how his wife, Lana Saeed, therefore, could potentially indicate criminal activity. It really does make you wonder if there is even worse yet to be uncovered in relation to a man who still remains chairman of the Conservative Party.